What she does is she interprets inspiration given from a consciousness from the other side. That's where my dad is. Yes. And he's there. So this is very real for me. Yeah. He is there. That is where my dad is. My mother is there. Your mother is there. This is just really new and raw for me. Right. So this is where he is. She calls this consciousness that she interprets or channels. She doesn't ever say channel, but she interprets. She calls this conglomeration of consciousness Abraham. And this consciousness helps people get into the vortex of good emotions and creations. So it doesn't matter if you believe it that she does this, or if you believe in this Abraham, or even in her ability to channel or interpret what he is saying, but the teachings are just phenomenal. And, and they can help anybody from any religion, any thought, consciousness, or any place whatsoever. Hey, everybody, it's Dr. Jack. And Mary. And this is the Forbidden Doctor podcast, episode 123. Everything is always working out for you. Everything. Oh, this is going to be fun. Today, we're going to take you on a journey, and it's going to be a wonderful, magical journey. And we know you're ready for it because you're listening to this podcast this day, right now. We're going to get deeper into the true meaning of healing, this forbidden healing. We're going to go to a place we've never gone before, so hold on. This is going to be quite the ride. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. And we'll explain the vortex as we get going. But before we do, we're going to bring the energy down just a little bit <laughs> <laughs> with the forbidden secrets they don't want you to know. These are the secret things they keep from you, the dumb things they tell you, and the really important things they know nothing about, although they just found something out. Oh, yeah. And I've had, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, several patients, and by several, I mean at least two or three, in just in the last week. Did you see the news? Did, Did you, you see, see the this? news? Yes, yeah. I saw the news. We've been screaming about it forever, but yes. there's an eight-year study now done, done where they show that heartburn drugs are tied to increased risk of early death. From all causes. All causes. This is an all-cause mortality thing. Yep. Like Everything. Ambien. Yeah. And Ambien it, increases the risk of mortality from all causes. So do PPIs. Now they're, now they're showing. Yeah. So, so let's quote directly from the uh, study itself. This is uh, CNN reporting. Mm -hmm. At prescription strength, proton pump inhibitors are associated with a potential 25% increased risk of early death from any cause. Wow. Suggests new research published Monday in the British Medical Journal, Open. Now, and, and, and to say it's any cause, I mean, even, even car deaths, because... Mm -hmm. As you realize what proton pumps inhibitors do to you, PPIs, they stop all protein from being digested Yeah, it and stops used. the formation of acid that's needed to break down proteins. Yeah. So what happens? So you don't rebuild. So your little twitch muscles... You're mus slowly falling apart. Yes, your little twitch muscles are not as fast and as quick, and your thinking isn't as good, and... All cause mortality yeah. causes you to die of everything from not just, as they've been saying for years, your jaws breaking and your hips snapping yeah. from these drugs. They've proven that. Yeah. But, but this the, is the all skin cause. is breaking down. The connective collagen that holds everything together, including your brain tissue, yeah. is so slowly eroding and breaking down. Your wrinkles. Now, again, from the report, the drugs known as PPI suppress excess acid in the stomach. Well, that's not quite true. They suppress acid in the stomach. Um, All acid. But not an ac it's not an, an excess of acid because uh, heartburn is not a problem from too much acid. It's too little. And we have some podcasts on this. But what they're doing is they're stopping all the acid. Mm -hmm. Not and, a good idea. Yeah. A number of studies reported that use of these drugs is associated with a number of adverse events, including kidney disease, fractures, pneumonia, dementia, <laughs> C. diff infections, and cardiovascular disease. Oh, my goodness. Now, those of you who are on PPIs listening to this right now, I, I want to ask you, did your physician tell you, watch out for these things because they are associated with the use of PPIs? No, they didn't. And those are just problems. But this study is saying death. Oh, yeah, well... The here, uh, again, I'm, I'm quoting, the longer patients 
used PPIs, the higher their risk of early death. In our studies, however, we looked at the data. There was always a consistent relationship between proton pump inhibitor use and the risk of death. Wow. Now, we're all going to die. But I think a lot it said of us... early death, though. Yeah, that's right. It said early uh, and death. And he's talking about dying way before your time. Yeah. From anything. Yeah. It's an eight-year study... And we're not going to read the whole thing here. You can, there's the there's, link. There's a link. You That's can go read it yourself. Link. That's it's, you can find it on CNN also, but yes. that is a link. But we're going to have some fun here with the next several slides. We don't normally do this. Yeah, but I have to show you this too. Oh, and yes. I've shown this before, but the pharmaceutical industry does not create cures. It creates customers. And the next few slides we're going to show you are some customers comments to this article in a local newspaper here. And, it's it's fascinating to me that they the comments indicate that they think proton pump inhibitors are cures. Yeah. Well, this first one here. <clears throat> Let me read the first one. Um, I, from Jim B. Was I'm if it's Jim Beam. No, okay. <clears throat> uh, I take omeprazole by prescription. I never have heartburn. Yeah. Before I was taking it, I couldn't walk through Smith's Produce and look at a green pepper and instantly get heartburn. I think he means without it happening. Yeah. I will take my chances with taking the drug. Well, of course he doesn't have heartburn when he takes omeprazole. What was the analogy I used earlier? I don't about know. That? It was, I was just trying to think of it. I was trying to think of it too, but uh, I'll, I'll tell you this. If I put duct tape over your nose and over your mouth, you won't be getting any oxygen into your lungs, and you can say the same thing. I never get oxygen in my lungs because <laughs> I've stopped it from happening. Well, here, taking omeprazole... Is well, stopping the formation right. of acid. And they think without the symptom, they have a cure. But now I hope he understands. Well, he doesn't. He said, I'll take my chances with the drug. Yeah, he read the report. Yeah. And now he said, well, I'll take my chances. Because he doesn't want that symptom. Well, it's only... What he, what he doesn't know, the forbidden information, is that you can get rid of it without taking the drug. Yes. Here's some more uninformed. Um. Let's see. I started on Prilosec Omeprazole in August of 2011 at age 64. By spring of 2013, that's almost two years later, I thought the Grim Reaper was coming after me. Went to doc, had a heart stress test. The works. Still had symptoms. Malaise, weakness, lightheaded, no energy, racing heart. Racked my brain for what it could be. Stopped taking Prilosec and symptoms went away after a few weeks. Took one Prilosec as a sort of a hypothesis testing. Symptoms returned. A friend referred me to a study that found heart issues in mice exposed to the drug. No more Prilosec for me. Yeah, well, that was uh, very informed, and he did his own study. Yes. <laughs> found out. Another one, Mac Mama, said, I took Prilosec for a couple of years after dealing with some serious acid reflux. It prevented absorption of other things to the point where my iron levels dropped down to single digits. I quit taking it immediately and have had to work hard to get my iron back up and to stay up. It was pretty scary, but what she doesn't understand, I guess it's a woman, is that she says it prevented absorptions of other things, which is protein. Well, yes, that's the true. The most important but thing. But it's not just iron that needs an acid environment. Calcium needs an acid it has environment. To be acid. Zinc needs an acid environment. Magnesium All those needs minerals. an acid. Yeah. The minerals need an acid environment yeah. to keep them in solution for absorption. And so when you don't have the acid environment there, you know, you still have pepsin. And pepsin's coming out of the stomach wall. It will do some breakdown of the protein, but not like the hydrochloric acid. Well, the acid gets it ready for the pepsin, starts breaking it down. And so the uh, and we have a few more of these to show you here. Uh, some people could die of ulcer, which he means um, a, 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 a hemorrhaging ulcer. I, I saw that once when this I was... This is what they scare you with. Oh, yeah. I saw this once. I saw this when I was doing my uh, pre-med. And I was working as an orderly in the emergency room, and a fellow came in with bleeding ulcers. I literally saw him puke up, vomit, an well, remember, entire basin full of blood. Remember at your brother's hospital where we saw that oh, lady? yes, on the security camera. Yes, puking blood up. Blood all over the place. Blood everywhere. I mean, this is the end results. 
So what it's happened all, okay. was she was told the acid caused the ulcer. Well, we know now that's not true because a fellow won the Nobel Prize in medicine a few years ago, mm -hmm. showing that ulcers were created by H. pylori, mm -hmm. bacterial infection. Which Dr. Roy Lee had discovered 30 years well, earlier. 50 years, maybe, yeah. He, at he, least 30. Yeah, at least 30 years earlier. But she was told <clears throat> if she, didn't if she doesn't take these things, she's going to have a bleeding ulcer, esophageal cancer, uh, a lot faster if they didn't take their prescribed PPIs. These types of new, news articles are so silly. Your doctor will know when risk outweighs benefit. I ask my GI, Ga gastro. gastrointestinal, about the risk of these types of articles, and he says they use crap data and that not all the claimed effects are proven. Some ha have even been disproven. Patients who need these drugs really need to continue to use them. Oh. Remember to ask your doctor before stopping anything prescribed to you, even if these unnecessary articles scare you. Unnecessary articles. And crap data. This was published, British Medical Journal, the oldest medical journal on the planet, mind you. It's older than Lancet. Randomized, double-blind studies is, are not crap data. No, not at all. And it's interesting that the doctor said it's crap data because they don't want you to think the things they've been prescribing to you are crap. So they don't have any way to heal this problem. And so they just throw the drug at it to stop you from yep. it, to stop the well, symptom. Uh, yeah, and, and the cascading effect of not absorbing protein. Yeah, is, they're going after something here that doesn't exist. And we've got um, a couple of more slides here for you. Um, somebody's saying that an article like this talking about a medical study is silly. Sounds to me like somebody saying that religion is silly because they don't want to believe it or choose it doesn't fit their lifestyle. This kind of article is something that should raise a flag and people should consider looking for more information or at least looking for the cause instead of just suppressing symptoms. Right, and That's this is the not the first one. article on this topic. It, it, it for the last 20 years, there's been great warnings about stopping protein digestion, <clears throat> not the least of which is necrosis of the jaw and uh, fracturing of the femoral hip. Yeah, that's been proven. Yep. Yeah. Here's um, another guy saying, I'll take my chances. And then K.A. says, this and lipid-lowering drugs, who owns and, who owns and runs America's health care? The answer, Big Pharma. Yes. I'm glad somebody threw in statins there, too, because those are the two biggest selling par pharmaceutical drugs, are statins and, pharma and um, PPIs, yes. heartburn drugs. And I think, I think they do more damage, well, than anything else. And it's so sad that it's yep. the, the number one and number two selling drugs. I don't know which one is number one and which is number two. All right, and then fr here's another one. A fellow, 32 years old, I take it daily. If I don't, then uh, I'll wake up with acid coming up my throat at 2 a.m. Not fun. I probably need to go to the doc, but just haven't really ever pushed it. Probably will now. Yeah, I hope he does <clears throat> save his life. Yeah. Um, okay, so Pug I think Dad, this is the last one. Pug Dad says, I have chronic gastric reflux disease. Do you love it? A disease. <laughs> and without um. O. O. Meprazole. There you go. O. Meprazole. What a name. I would frequently awaken by aspirating reflux, closing off my throat. Without O. Meprazole, I have an increased risk of esophageal cancer. He just states that. Yes. Unbelievable. Well, the doctor told him that. Well, he would, too, if he didn't fix the problem. Yes. I mean, that acid going up his Well, throat. yeah, he's going to have ulceration taking place, Definitely. which is Barrett's esophagus, Barrett's which esophagus. will lead to esophageal cancer. Yeah, and it's true, but it causes so many other problems. You know, that little thing called death, that it would be the forbidden information that nobody will give you in the mainstream medical society is yes. that this is easily taken care of. So now he's upset. He says, the government's going to outlaw something that improves my quality of life? Well, for a time, and then you die. So, <laughs> well, you die an early death, yes. I should say. So then here's this person here is really trying. Says, we eat lots of greens, beans, nuts, and seeds. But last week I had a slice of pizza, American junk food pizza. Thought I was going to die. So I guess he had, or yep. she had acid reflux. And then he says, it's, you know, you just got to remember to eat well. Well, you know, all he thinks is, or she thinks, greens, beans, nuts, and seeds are good. And they are. There's nothing wrong with those. But what they don't, what they're not told is they need to be able to rebuild. They need to eat protein, whole 
complex protein like that's in meat and also yeah. good fats. And they will heal much faster and easier. So, th- again, first, do no harm. I mean, this is just yeah, unbelievable. There used to be a nice little slogan out there. Yeah. We, we've adopted it because it was abandoned by another industry. <laughs> it was abandoned. But this is just so dramatic, the amount of harm that is done from yeah. these acid reflux drugs. And it's not like it's the next day you take a pill and boom, you die the next day. So they just don't see this. As they know that if you get your gallbladder out really young, you die earlier than other people. But it's so far apart, they can't, yeah. they can't put the two together. So I really, oh, there's, didn't come in right. But if you, <laughs> if you eat these things in the evening, will you get heartburn? Here's a quick, fast relief that usually works right away. Uh, unless you have a more serious foundational yeah. gut problem. And we are putting together a webinar right now that will go in very deep into, into this very topic. We're gonna, I guarantee you, you will not want to miss it. Yeah, we, we are going to change the face of the earth with acid reflux because that's where it all starts. Yeah. And one thing about this, I, I can tell you right now, if I was uh, so inclined tonight around 9 30 10 o'clock and the kids had ordered pizza and there was a slice or two left and i ate it i would be awake no, at I... two or three in the morning with vesuvius going off up my throat however if i took two or three maybe even four or five of these zypan tablets immediately after i ate that pizza <laughs> whew, yeah maybe. no problem i don't think you'd have that so much now. You, I haven't known you to have that. Oh, well, I've because I've been taking Zypan for a long time. Well, that and you've been getting your gut healthy, but I haven't known you Well, to. I wouldn't be eating pizza at 9 o'clock at night. Yeah, either. you might, but you ought to be able to. Little kids can eat Let's pizza. Let's try it tonight. They can eat at 10 o'clock at night, and they don't wake up with acid reflux, so... I they don't have se- my worries. <laughs> Jack, <laughs> let me get this out. I have not seen you have acid reflux in at least well, five or six years. That's true. And I know you have eaten late. That's You've true. You've had popcorn. I know that really late. Oh, yeah. Well, popcorn's a health food. <laughs> <laughs> I agree with that, actually. All right. That is my one vice. But, yeah, so you can heal your gut completely to where you can have those things late at night. All right. Well, we need to get into the podcast. Okay. Here. Don't forget to join our texting blast. We had a great coupon this week. Oh, so did get, we ever? Yeah. you got to get signed up before. It's too late now for that last one. So get signed up now for the next coupon. And we always send out coupons almost every single week. Just text the word healthy to 41411. This website podcast is not intended to be a diversion away from the current system of disease management. It is our intention to offer a rational and very effective approach to aiding your body in its ability to rebuild and heal. Please be advised that any suggested nutritional advice or dietary advice is not intended as a primary treatment or therapy for any disease or particular bodily symptom. Nutritional counseling, supplement vitamin recommendations, nutritional advice, and the adjunctive schedule of nutrition is provided solely to upgrade the quality of foods in the patient's diet in order to supply good nutrition supporting the physiological and biomechanical processes of the human body. Okay, last podcast, I told you about my wonderful father and how he had died. He was 91, um, but because, so it wasn't a tragedy or anything, but it was, you know, still very sad for me. But because of him dying, I've been more sensitive and I've been searching out some different true, he- well, actually, I tell you, these things have been coming to me. Like a river. Like a river. And, and I think it's just because I'm close to the other side because I know my, my, you know my incredible father that loved me and I loved him so much is on the other side, but he's, he feels so close to me right now. And, and so I've been searching out more true healing in the sense of healing my heart and my mind. And I have truly been in a wonderful state of recovery of some long-held sadness since then. And I've been find, finding answers to long-held questions, and I decided to share some of them with you. So there's a little prelude here. I'm showing a picture of my dad's coffin. And if you look up there, there's, they're bringing over, this was at the end of, of the um, coffin. Graveside service. Graveside services, that's mm-hmm. it. And they're bringing over something they call the vault, and they put it over him. 
and they bury him with that. And I'm bringing it up for a reason you'll see in just a minute. But before that, let's raise the energy just a little bit and show off that my dad was a pretty cool guy. In fact, that's my dad on the left. He took the first ever selfie. See his arms? How they're yeah, with an old out? brownie box camera, <laughs> of all things. Yeah, he was super cool. Yeah. And then they got married. See how beautiful my mom is and my dad. It was what a gorgeous, gorgeous couple. They lived a very funny and great life. They were never very far apart. Unfortunately, they're apart now. But isn't that cute? They're laying in front of their gravestones. Mm -hmm. I think that's so beautiful. They had a fun life together for 65 and a half years. And there they are in Hawaii. This is how my mom and dad were all the time. Constantly had their arms around each other. But I'm going now, to Mary, you, Mary's telling you all of this to set the stage for something incredible that happened. Yeah, this, is, this shows you how close we are to the other side, and we are going to wrap it into incredible healing. Yes. Now watch this. So, back to his funeral. We were at the graveside, and I was the last to leave his graveside, and Jack, you were very patient to stick around because we have a huge family, but I was the last one there. And after they had removed the chains and lowered, well, they'd lowered him down into the grave and removed the chains, I went over to, the, to his grave, or to his, his vault, as it's called, and I dropped a single white rose onto his casket after it was lowered down there, and it landed perfectly. Look oh, at yeah. that. Oh, yeah, like, like you had reached all the way no, down in I there to place it. it. No, I was there beside you. I saw you drop yeah, it. Yeah, I just dropped it, and it just landed beautifully, and it was... You know, it was the last goodbye to my dad, and I was very sad, but I was hopeful um, at the same time because I was hopeful my dad saw the white rose. In fact, I, I pretty much expected it. I, I knew that he saw it, and I, and I wanted my dad to make it known to me that he did. I, I kind of wanted him to know some things that I had been through in the last four, four years, things that I didn't tell him while I was alive. I just wanted, you know, I didn't, I don't know if I didn't get time or the setting wasn't right. Sure. I just didn't tell him while he was alive. And I just wanted him to acknowledge that he knew. Yep. And it became a huge, it, it was a really big desire for me. So I had a really rough time about four years ago, and I wanted to talk to him about it. But it, again, I just never did while he was alive. But I really wanted to know what happened. And I wish I told him before he died. But I felt... I felt this real in-depth depth feeling that he now knew, and I could feel. I could feel his unconditional love for me. So when I dropped that white rose onto his grave, I just said a simple prayer, vibrational energy, desire, intentional, intention, thought, whatever you want to call it, that he would acknowledge that he knew what I had been through by returning to me a white rose. Yeah. That's what I wanted. That was my desire. Bring this that's, back to me. That's what I put out in the yeah, universe. I don't think that's unreasonable. No. And it doesn't matter what it is. That's what's so fascinating. So I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and I looked for a white rose everywhere. I even went so far as to send white roses to people that had helped with the funeral to thank them. I was trying, I was trying to force a manifestation, or I was just trying to bring it into my my um, psyche and, and my vibration. And I was a little impatient. I knew it had only been 17 days, but I was looking everywhere for a white rose, but to no avail. No white roses were showing up yeah. anywhere, okay? And I was kind of getting sad about it. But 17 days later, Jack and I decided to go watch Beauty and the Beast. It's the new movie that's out. And it was so beautiful. But it had just come out on video, and I had missed seeing it in the theaters. My mom and sisters had seen it together in the theaters just a few days before Dad had died, and I hadn't been able to go. So when the movie started, I was thinking about Dad, and I kind of felt his presence in the room with us, and I was hoping and watching. Um, I, I, I was watching it because I, I felt his presence because I knew he would have loved to have gone with Mom to have seen it. Yeah. Because it was, again, the few days before he died, and they were never apart. And it was very strange because somebody had to sit with him while we, well, I didn't get to go, but while they went to the Beauty and the Beast. So as I'm watching this, and I don't even know how to say this, there's a scene in the movie where the dad tries, the dad, mind you, the dad tries to get a white rose for his daughter. Yeah, I, re I remember when this came up in the movie, no one prepared us for this. No. 
I, mean, I saw I, you I, sit up and I saw your eyes start to bug out of your head. I, yep. It was so beautiful because it was a dad that got a white rose for his daughter. Yes. And, you know, of course, in the movie, the action almost cost him his life, but he was determined and he didn't forget. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? So with all the magic surrounding the entire movie, everywhere, magic and life, dad gave me my white rose. It was so beautiful. Let's just sit here for just a minute and watch. My dear Belle, you're so ahead of your time. This is a small village. You are the most gorgeous You are the one I've ever seen. Nobody deserves you. And Nobody deserves you. And small-minded as well. But small as well. Safe, safe, safe. There was a white yeah, rose. Was did a you white see rose that? that he got. Yeah, That's he all I could get from the movie. That's from the trailer. Almost lost his life getting that. He almost did, but he didn't forget. And did you hear how he says, I wanted to keep you safe? Yes. It was so beautiful. My dad always did things to keep us safe. Always checked our tires when we were traveling. Would not let us leave until he had checked them. And there's a still shot out of it. See him reaching for the white rose right all, there. Yeah, look at all the white roses. Mm-hmm, everywhere. Yes. And there he is, almost losing his life. <laughs> The horse trampling him, and there's a white rose. And all right your there. frustration and all those pent up emotions of having asked this of your father, unfulfilled. It looks just like the one I threw about, in his grave. And then about three weeks later, mm-hmm. this happened. So death is not the end. It's just a transition. It's just an adjusted transition to a more aware state and place. But what if here was heaven? What if this was heaven, as Anita Morjani says? So today, we're going to talk about emotional healing right here, right now. So with all that happening, we also had a wonderful thing come into our lives that's helped us heal emotionally. Do you remember The Secret? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the movie. This is the movie that came out about 12 years ago. Well, there was a woman in there. Her name was Is Esther Hicks, and she talked about the law of attraction, Um, She was taken out of the movie. It's a long litigated story, uh, although she didn't litigate anything. But she went on and and just lost, got rid of that negative energy and went on and created her own hole in the universe. She has all these seminars and videos and teachings, and they're healing the world everywhere. Her story is in the book. Oh, there she is, Esther Hicks. Her story is in the book, Ask and It is Given. Now, I know many of you have heard of her and have probably been listening to her for a long time, but it just came to me when I was needing it. Well, we we ran across this 12 years ago, but we weren't listening. No, not at all. No. Not at all. So I'll give you a really short recap and just hang with me. This is a little woo-woo out there, (laughs) but hang with me. What she does is she interprets inspiration given from a consciousness from the other side. That's where my dad is. Yes. And he's there. So this is very real for me. Yeah. He is there. That is where my dad is. My mother is there. Your mother is there. This is just really new and raw for me. Right. So this is where he is. She calls this consciousness that she interprets or channels. She doesn't ever say channel, but she interprets. She calls this conglomeration of consciousness, Abraham. And this consciousness helps people get into the vortex of good emotions and creations. So it doesn't matter if you believe that she does this or if you believe in this Abraham or even in her ability to channel or interpret what he is saying, but the teachings are just phenomenal. And, And they can help anybody from any religion, any thought, consciousness, or any place whatsoever. So the very nature of thought that, that um, Esther talks about and through Abraham, the very nature of thought is, create, is creative in its potential. Just thinking a thought creates. This creative force does not depend on what church, political party, ethnic origin, or football team you may like. <laughs> it has no prerogative but to get the ball rolling. All action begins with thought. And unfortunately for so many, ends with the thought, but I can't do this. Now, remember, 
um, as a child, no one had to tell you how to be happy or have a good time or even how to like yourself. Yeah, happy kids. You ever seen a depressed two-year-old? No. No. And, and no one was giving you instructions on what it meant to be alive or, or um, even how to be a human being. You just were. And you, you'd get up, you, you'd get breakfast, or, or someone got it for you. You'd <laughs> run out the door, and most likely you weren't seen again until dark. At least during school time. Yeah. 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 And even when you got hungry, um, you were too busy uh, being yourself. And you were never compelled. Now, you go out and have fun. Yeah. I mean, you were never compelled to have fun. You did what you wanted as far as you could get away with yeah, it. Yeah, I remember as a little kid just... W- just just absolutely dying if I heard my mom call me because oh, yeah. I was oh. having so much oh, fun outside yeah, right. playing come to court and no nobody ever went out there and went, I'm so bored. <laughs> I mean, we just did Don't everything. Don't you just hate playing these games at night? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, that was being in the vortex. That was this is the vortex. And this is what we mean by it. It's a dynamically spinning tornado of energy and creation, of inspiration and imagination, of of vibrational harmony and the instantaneous expressions of your will, unhampered by anybody else's opinions or negative thinking. This is the vortex. And you're not invited to join the vortex. You were born into it. You're born a member. You were a member. And it's all around you and it's in you and it's through you, pervading every cell, every thought, every instinct. And what I'm talking about is the essence of life itself. Your source. And when you're in it, you're happy, despite the circumstances. And I'm thinking of the, what's the fellow's name that was in the concentration camps? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he was happy. And he was happy. He was there and he's happy. And what did he manifest? Perfect health. And he survived. He did. Yeah. So when you're in it, you're happy despite your circumstances. You, you can see the light at the end of the tunnel that you're in. You're, you're drawn to your deepest inner self where, in a, where all the answers actually really reside. To and you, everything. And you can create a new idea in an instant. You can solve any puzzle by focusing that vortex energy. But most exciting of all, you can ask for anything using concerted effort and focus And in the stillness of the moments that follow, hours, days, months, it's going to be given to you. That is living in the vortex. I experienced it this morning. You've been experiencing it the last few days. Well, I have been listening to her nonstop. I, since my dad died, I've had a real hard time getting into anything else. I have been... I have been lapping this up like a, a, a starving man in the desert, you know, a thirsty man in the desert. Well, so, can, well, can you be outside the vortex and still be alive? Well, of course you can. Well, that's where I've been. I mean, that's where many reside. Judgment, jealousy, yep, anger, hatred, yep, justification, yep. manipulation, <laughs> lying, yep. deceiving, no, lying. using people, mm, infidelity. Crap. These are symptoms of being out of the vortex. And, how, and so how do you know if you're in or out? Well, your emotions will tell you, and this is the thing that really clicked with me. One of the most precious gifts of the universe are your emotions. Feeling angry, used, and cheated. Hey, hey, all right. By these emotions, you know you're out of the vortex and beyond finding a solution to feeling angry, used, and cheated. So you do an emotional U-turn, get back in the vortex immediately. Yeah, like the... Like the- Car says, when safe, do a legal U-turn. Yeah. Are you feeling uplifted, evolving, emotionally happy and creative? Well, another hooray, <laughs> because by this, you, that you're sending out to the universe a requested selection from the greatest menu of all, the universe itself, that loving, filling, satisfying, enriching field of consciousness that we all live in that is devoted to one purpose the fulfilling and the answering of your heart's deepest desires and yearnings. And you're going to be in one or the other, in the vortex or out of it, and your emotions will show you which which place. Yeah, and more simply put, this vortex is a place where we just feel good. Just feel good. This thought, this place, this vortex, it's what's helped me so much recently. Um... I was listening to Esther Hicks, or Abraham, through Esther Hicks, and this came through, and I just thought it was so 
beautiful. I was born into the vortex. Then things happened. And I, I focus myself out of the vortex. I have control. Inside the vortex, I feel no fear. Adventure, enthusiasm, passion, friskiness, eagerness, but no fear. All I have to do is direct my own thoughts and I can control my world. Because controlling my world is only about controlling the way I feel. My, my goodness. So feeling joy is the only job you're looking for, isn't That's it? the only job I have. And how hard is that? How hard is, it, hard is it to dream and to have fun? I mean, I'm telling you, you just focus on that. But take baby steps and focus on fun. How hard is that? Yeah. You don't have to get yourself motivated. You get to dream. You get to inspire yourself. You get to think. Nobody, nobody can tell you what to think of. So you just think in your own head. You just think of the most incredible, happy thoughts. And it changes the whole vortex of your life. It doesn't hand you a um, million dollars that day, but it changes the direction and the whole vortex to where that can manifest yes. itself. Because if you keep blocking it or damning it by these negative thoughts, then it never comes to pass. Yeah. But if you change it, it absolutely has to come to pass. That is the law of attraction that she go. talks so much about. So we have this thing that's called contrast. Black good, and white. Good and bad, black and white. Separation from each other. And because there's certainly people you felt very, very connected with, but then felt separated from them. Mm -hmm. And to be able to appreciate this contrast, we have to see and experience both sides. Yeah. We have a very intimate experience with contrast, and most of us have had plenty of experience. I mean, <laughs> even more so with being out of the vortex than inside. I know I have. Yeah, I have too. But I also have experience in the vortex. And I know the contrast because I've seen it and I've experienced it, that duality of life. The good, the bad dichotomy. I was taught in my youngest years that to get adult approval, I had to be good or at least act good. And that was the starting of my performances. They took kept you. me out of the vortex. For almost our whole lives. Yeah, because you're not in the vortex when you got to perform to get something like love and acceptance. Especially that. I mean, actually, this is denying the universe's ability to deliver the goods. And so you could push this marvelous, magnificent power aside and use your own puny behaviors and actions in this slow vibration outside the vortex to move mountains or change the hearts of men. Yeah. And we're talking about true vibrational power here, Mary. It can change genes, as we've talked about in Podcast 101. And we try to use our behaviors and we try to use our actions. And there's nothing wrong with good behaviors and action to change the direction of your life. I don't have any problem yeah. with that. But if you, you have to realize we are in this, we are in this vortex, which I felt so close to me with my dad dying that he is here we're all here in this together as one and if we jump into the vortex swirly motion of creation we can build worlds and and, and we we talked about this in podcast 101 where you can change your genes and how they actually prove that you can do that with your thought processes so what we're trying to explain right here is that we all have this contrast we see ourselves against. We have this marvelous gift of asking and receiving, and we all have the tools to determine if we are in alignment with our true selves in the vortex or out of alignment, whether we're dancing on emotions until someone comes along and tells us, we're okay and we're loved and we're accepted for our actions. You've been really good. We'll accept you now. Yeah, which is essentially denying the power of the vortex to make that clear by itself. Mm -hmm. out, out of the vortex, we have fear. And that can be fear of anything. The IRS, the police state, your spouse, <laughs> a neighbor, your priest, um, your bishop, a sibling, a parent, even your own shadow. Yeah. Because in the vortex, we have excitement and creation, a happy anticipation of each, each moment that's coming towards us. So here in the vortex. Yeah, um, momentarily, 
Um, it, fear can be a good thing because yeah. it shows you the proximity of the border of the vortex. Yeah, there's the edge because yeah, the yeah. closer I get to it, the uh, more fearful I become. I'm starting to feel fear. Yes. And so you need to make that immediate legal U-turn before you get spit right out of the vortex. Yeah. And that's the contrast we're trying to explain. I'm sorry, were you going to jump in there? No. That's, that's the context I wanted to get, a, to get across to you. When you feel yourself spinning or getting spit out of the vortex, when that fear just hits you like a, you know, like fear a fear of anything, a fear of anything. It's just a, it just slams you in the face. And so it, it's, it's a really good recognition. And that's incredible that you do have that recognition. So don't think of these negative emotions as, Oh, I'm bad. Oh, I'm out of the vortex. It's more that, Whoa, I got to make an that's immediate. Right. Thank goodness for the feeling of fear that just came over me because it shows I'm out of the vortex. I've lost contact with the universe. Yeah. So I, about four years ago, these, I was in the vortex. I have been in the vortex for a long time. And these pictures were taken of me about four years ago. And I was so happy and so excited about life. And then contrast caused me, because of the contrast, it threw me out of the vortex really quickly. And I did not recognize that I could bring myself back in. So when contrast causes me to put good, expanding ideas and beingness into my life, and I allow myself in and I feel the fullness of it, I felt like those pictures that you just saw go by. I probably sent them by too fast. But, but once being there, once I was there and I felt this incredible expanding, I can never step back from that and not notice it. Yeah. I have been so free and happy in the past. It surpassed all the wonderful experiences of my life. And I was truly in the vortex of life and creation was just flowing from me. I created so many things back then. But you can't step back from that big vortex, that huge expanding creating vortex without a big contrast of losing your true self. Because there's no regression that is truly me. Yeah, Abraham talks about all the things that we can put into this vortex. Love, money, boats, <laughs> creations of empires. Millions of dollars. Yeah, I, got, I need a million dollars. Yeah. But what we're really only putting in is the expanded version of what we really are, who we really are. Me. Which is me. That's what we're putting in. And I am the creation. So when life causes me, the creation, to be to create, to experience something wonderful, and I'm not really quite that stable, as in stable enough to know I created it and how to stay there. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, and I didn't either. Then there's this pulling away from who I am, and that's what fear is. That's when fear comes in. Yeah. I, I don't think we're afraid of things happening. I'm feeling the way I'm feeling because I'm not being who I am. And that's what all, that's all that fear is. It's just an indicator saying to you, hey, you're off track, but it's, but okay. it's okay. It's okay. Negative emotion is always saying, I'm not in alignment with who I am, but that's okay. No judgment. I am not yet in alignment with who I am, but that's okay. I'm not in alignment with who I am right now. But that's okay. Because it is, is okay. okay. It's got to be okay because life is such that I've got to be able to step out of the vortex, see the contrast, or I can't be the expanded, expanded being that I am. I can't be that. That's how we come into the knowing. Yeah. We had to step out of the vortex, step out into separation to see the contrast so we'd be able to see who we really are. And that's the only way we can. So it is a good thing. That's why we say that's okay. This goes along with the five-minute forgiveness cure, which we talked about in podcast 16. It's okay to be out of the podcast. I mean... <laughs> out of the vortex. <laughs> we could do that, though. It's not okay. Um, because with each exploration into more joy... Uh, 
There's an expression that occurs in the larger part of your experiences, and it holds steady. So if you're going to remain in concert with that larger part of you, you can't settle back into something less than what you've become without some kind of discord taking place. Yeah, so when you're a little kid, you're always in the vortex, and you just think that's how life is. And then it starts throwing you out, as it did me. I'm talking about myself. Threw me out. I'd get back in for a while. Threw me out. And I stayed... I went back in and after I married you, I came back in and I stayed in it for a long, long time, but I wasn't stable. I I didn't know. I didn't recognize. I did the old thing that, oh, I'm bad. I'm so sad and I'm so depressed and I'm so all these things. And I didn't understand how simple and how easy to get back in. It's such a natural state for us. And so we've been exploring this and it's just been fascinating my life caused me to expand because of my determination to discover my joy. Yeah. I was determined. My life has caused me to expand to heights I couldn't comfortably maintain because I didn't know I was the vortex. Yes. And I didn't know what to do when I stepped out of the vortex of happiness and I fell into some pain. So I've been living in some emotional pain for the last four years. And my dad's death sent me on a wonderful search because his death wasn't such a tragedy that I couldn't focus my energy. I could, I could get out of that. I could see that, you know, this isn't, you know, the worst thing ever, ever, ever to happen. I could see my way out and I found Esther Hicks or it found me. I don't know. I sent out messages saying... I need some help, and help was on the way, and I found her message and the law of attraction. So, how have I begun to fix this? I've been doing these baby steps, easy stuff, fun stuff, imagination. I haven't been trying to motivate me. I haven't been trying to... Just try a little harder. Yeah, to force myself. You know, force works, but it always ends, and it never, ever lasted. But what does last? Imagination. So instead of, I, I, tried, I tried it with just little things. And so instead of standing at the bottom of a hill, trying to stop an out of control car zooming down and running over me, I decided to start at the top of the hill, the, the um, easy path and focus on how to slow the car down. Um, you know, maybe just by yanking the crazy driver out of the seat and slowly driving it myself. But I just did little things. And so I'm focusing on little things that make me feel better. I'm discovering, again, control of my thoughts, which I do have control, which I didn't think I had control of, which I couldn't even go there. And I have been discovering control of my thoughts, reaching for thoughts that feel better, not huge things, just baby steps. And then I've started blessing any emotion, even an emotion that feels like fear. Blessed fear, you wonderful indicator, you, letting me know I'm not in the vortex. That's just incredible, Mary. Yeah. That is just incredible. So I'm not afraid the other shoe's going to drop. I'm not afraid the world's going to come to an end. I'm not afraid because I'm having maybe a nervous breakdown all of a sudden. I'm, or I'm not afraid I'm sick and dying. I'm not afraid because I'm out of control in something, I'm afraid. The reason I'm afraid is because I'm out of my vortex. Oh, yes. Yeah, and you don't have to have something that made you fearful to be out of the vortex. No. Fear is the result of being out of the vortex. Fear is the result. Yes. Yeah. And in other words, you weren't scared out of the vortex. Mm -hmm. Something else took you out, and then fear showed up to let you know you were out. It's an indicator. And then you can't just be afraid, so you have to attach your fear to something. And so you build a stream of thoughts around that fear and repeat it over and over and over again. And the more you repeat it, the more you actually create it. Yeah, I'm a victim. I, I didn't create this. I, you know, my life is terrible, blah, blah, blah. It just yeah. goes on and on. And you re- every time you repeat it, the more you create it. And the more you create it, the more difficult it becomes to get back in the vortex. And all of a sudden... You're a million miles out of it and out of happiness, out of joy, out of fun, out of inspiration and correct. And that's and what creation, happened to me. And that's what happened to me. Yeah. You too, huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling fear because I'm not in the vortex, period. That's it. Every single time I step out of the vortex, I'm going to feel negative emotion, which is on the right side of the slide there. The sliding, slippery slope 
downward fear spiral is at the very bottom. to get down to the bottom Grief, of fear. Grief, depression, powerlessness, victim. Yes. And that's where I was for a long, long time. So isn't that wonderful? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good indicator. Well, it's a fabulous indicator. And it's okay. Yeah. I mean, how? otherwise, how would you know? So when I feel fear... I realize I'm just out of the vortex and all the negative emotion is not me or anything real. It's just being out of the vortex. That's it. It's not me. And fear of somebody not liking you. That's yeah. a huge oh, one. Oh, yes. That's not a, being enough. Not, not being enough. measuring up. You know how that feels. Oh, my goodness. So think of that emotion. You know, oh, I just got to try a little bit harder. Oh, I wish I could get rid of this cellulite. Everybody would like me better. I just need more money. I need a better car. I need a better house. Then I'll be okay. Yeah, I, I got to lose a lot of weight. Then I'll I be okay. I shouldn't have said that. Yeah. Um, all these different things that bring you out of the vortex, bring you down, 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 clear down into powerlessness, victim, fear, grief, depression. So you really have nothing to be afraid of. Why? Well, I've got fear. We've got fear. <laughs> I've got fear to tell me I'm out of the vortex. My emotions are indicating where I am in relationship to where I am. <laughs> so if I'm afraid, yes, my guidance system is working. Now, when possible, make a legal U-turn. Yes. No judgment. Back into, come judgment. No judgment. No judgment. No, no sense of anything. Just recognize that when you're feeling the victim, when you're feeling like, I'm so scared, that's a big one. Yeah. Or, which I just recently had a patient say to me, I'm so scared. There's no judgment there. Just realize everything is going to be okay. Because it is. Help is coming. Yeah, help is on its way. Help is on its way. Now, what you can do for yourself, because the power in you can change that whole dynamic around. And here's what I tried to do with little baby me, steps. Okay, let me just add this little part here. Um, this, this whole thing here, this whole slide, what we've been talking about, is what helps me to better understand all the people who've had a near-death experience and they come back and talk about the absence of judgment. Yes, beautiful. No judgment on the other side at all. The incredible peace, the ultimate vortex experience. And my dad came back and gave yep. me a white rose. Yeah. It was so cool. So here's what I do. I'm going to bring up this beautiful, beautiful place. So... You're going to maybe need to pull over the car if you're driving and listening to this because I'm going to have some beautiful slides here. I am the creator. And if I find myself in that, quote, blessed fear, okay, then I know how to create myself right out of it. And this is it. I accept where I am in the moment. I do not fight it. If I'm angry, I say, thank you. Now I know I'm out of the vortex. How do I get back in? Oh, boy. <laughs> well, what would be really working for you? What would happen, have to happen, for you to know things were really working out for you? What would you need to see, hear, or experience for you to know the universe was working things out? For you. Yeah, for, for, for you to not feel alone. I mean, would that be all right? Yeah. For you to feel confident in yourself. For you to believe that you have the power to create your own reality. Oh, now wait a minute. You already are creating your own reality. What's, what's happening to you right now is the net sum of your thoughts up to this point. You are drawing to you beauty, happiness, success, wealth, a truly satisfying existence, or... You're drawing just the opposite. But what is happening to you right now, you can thank yourself because you've created this. Yeah. And you can change it. Yeah. Even if it's not your fault. Yes. That Feel how that feels. Even if it's not your fault, feel how that feels. You're out of the vortex. You're not in creation. You're a victim to something. Somebody has done something, or you've caught a virus, or you've got cancer, or you are something. Feel how that feels. Feel that dense energy, and then look at this slide. Wow. Because the trick is to move out of that in the moment. I'm going to go to the next slide. Look at this. This is in Switzerland. It's in Appenzell. I don't know where that is, but I want to go there. <laughs> Just look at these pictures. When I look at these, I zip right back into the vortex. I imagine myself there smelling the air, the clean water, the peace, 
I don't know if the cows would be there in my picture, but <laughs> it's so beautiful. I mean, it's the cycle of life, the circle of life right there with living animals and the plants and the water and the sky. And it just immediately zips me back into a place that feels good. Baby steps, remember? Yeah. Okay, you can't get rid of your cancer today. You can't manifest a million dollars today. Well, I don't know. Maybe you can. Anita Morjani did. But let's, let's just try to be reasonable. Come and reason together. And let's look at this. Now how do you feel? Let's go to the next slide. Do you see that guy standing on the top of the mountain? Do you see him there? He's oh, in yeah. black, so he's kind of hard to see. But he's looking down. I mean, just look at that. The highest heights, the lowest lows, but not in a bad way. <laughs> it's beautiful down on the low. Everything is so beautiful there. How could that not zip you right back yeah, into the Yeah, if you're the standing vortex? there on that ledge with him or in place of him, looking at that scenery... How could you not be sucked back into the world? So you want this desire. You're looking down the future. You want to be free of cancer. Or you want to get a um, boyfriend or a husband. Or you're, you want you know, to get out of debt. And you're imagining down, down, the, down the way. But if you right here, right now, have this feeling of deadness, this feeling of victimhood, this feeling of I have been labeled with diabetes... How does that, that damns you, that blocks you, it stops the energy. So what you do, it's not like you go into denial about anything. You recognize where you are, but then you move your vortex of energy. You start turning it and turning it and turning it to where it opens up the path so you can find that lover, so you can find and bring to you the path for making a million dollars or perfect health and energy and happiness into your life. Look at that picture. Look at that picture. How can that keep you in a bad place right now? You have to open up this energy right now. Can you ask the universe to give you a fun life? You can. Yeah. You can ask that. There's nothing stopping you. Nobody can stop you from asking the universe to give you a fun life. Clarity. Good friends, food, good food, <laughs> good fun places to go like that. Imagine yourself right there, right there, and your vortex of happiness spins and opens up right here and now and opens up your desires that you've put out there already. You've already put out that you want to heal your cancer or get rid of this gastric distress or... Um, any, any, you know, you want your children to all come together and be happy. You want your marriage to be happier. You want all these things. It's got to be right here and now. You can't imagine down the future and stay in horribleness right here and now. So That's very good, Mary. Yeah. So you wake up eager for the day. If you don't, then you grab a picture like this and you think and you change your energy. You... You don't have to wait for the universe to give you your heart's longing. You can make it right here and now. Then the whole universe can do that very thing. It can't stop. It's the law of attraction. So you just have to ask the universe to bring to you the fullest measure of all you can be, and you do it right there and now with your power. Look at this one. <laughs> Look at that picture. I, I'm speechless, Mary. I, 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 I am. That's a real place. I've just been listening to you, and I just I am carried away. That is a real saying. day. Oh yeah, yeah. Apparently, anything can happen today. That happened that day. Yeah. Look at that. Look at the clouds. Well, we Look have at the we've little been, mist of we've fog. been to Switzerland. We can appreciate these pictures. We didn't see that. I don't. We didn't think. see that one. <laughs> I don't think so. We were on a train. They were kind of hiding that one. It was a. I mean, you could live right there. You can imagine. Can you imagine yourself living right there and the vortex of the energy inside of you? Now, if you stop and think, 
oh, I could never live there. Look, I've got debts up the ceiling and I've got all these problems and I, you know, I just got divorced and I, there's no way. And that makes you more angry. Mm-hmm. Do you see how that stops and you? start you? going down that spiral in that earlier Down into slide. victimhood, down yeah, to the bottom. To my fear. My ex-husband doesn't pay his alimony. You know, doesn't... You know, you can just go down, down, down and looking at that picture. So you are the creator. So stop. It's okay. Take a deep breath. And if you can imagine anything in your head, imagine that. That's one of the reasons I think I've created what I've created in my life is that I have, nobody has ever put stops on my imagination. Nobody could ever control me in that. And so I imagine these amazing things. I lay in bed and I imagine being up on the side of the mountain in Tibet and inside there's this beautiful building and you walk inside. It's kind of like the movie, What Dreams May Come Mm -hmm. in that beautiful building in there, but it's even more magnanimous and magnificent. And in the Beauty and the Beast movie, there's these rooms, these bedrooms and this castle. And why not? Why not imagine that? It starts spinning that vortex around and around and around. And you cannot stay in victimhood no. when you hear that. No, you, you can't. I've, I've spent that. most of my life imagining Motel 6. <laughs> <laughs> and you're well, you've been looking for it outside of you. That oh, somebody yeah. else will bring it to you. Somebody will tell me I'm great. Somebody will tell me I'm loved. Somebody will really like me. I'll work and work and work and do all these actions so I look perfect so everybody loves me. Or that I'll, you know, I'll work my head off at my job and nothing ever seems to turn out right. And I keep going bankrupt or I keep doing this. You just have to control right now. Yeah, that's, that's all you it. can do anyway. You put it out to the universe. The universe hears you. You ask, and it will be given if you don't use your magnificent creative powers to stop it, to damn it. Oh, you can stop it as e- easily as you start it. I have an illness. Yes. I, it's not my fault. I, I want tremendous power and dynamic and love to come together in a relationship with someone very special in my life, but... I'm fat. Yes, but they won't really like me. (laughs) You know, you you stop it before it it. starts. You are the creator. You stop it. And you can turn it around with these little, teeny, tiny steps. Not a motivation, but imagination. Can you imagine what you can imagine? I can't. It doesn't even expand far enough for me. It's just like this. It's like. Well, you're always showing me pictures of places around the planet. You're showing me houses. You're showing me plans. You're showing me photographs of the ocean and all the places you want to go to. Yeah, I had to stop myself. This is from Switzerland Vacations, their Instagram, which we'll show you in a minute. They, she, they've got 1,300 posts, and I had to literally force myself to stop, or we would have pages of these. Okay, let's well, go to the next one. we do have pages we of these. Do. <laughs> Can you stand alone against all those that hold you back because they cannot see the same greatness inside themselves that you see in yourself? Do you see that person up there on the top? Stand there. Smell the air. Smell the breeze. So beautiful. Here's the next one. Whoa, this is in Ber- Bergen. Bergen. Yeah. yeah. Bergen, Switzerland. Isn't that beautiful? Can you see that as a gift that that you 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 can see as a gift when you're not in the vortex, so you switch around quickly and see the incredible beauty that's there and feel it change your emotions. And here's the next one. Yeah. And look at this. Can, can you know, look how this house is surrounded. I'll tell you what this picture made me feel, that, that we are all surrounded by this immense source of eternal love from which we all sprang. And there's the perfect house, home, dwelling embodiment of that very thought. Yeah, walk through the front door. Walk in there. See the beauty of what's inside. Know that outside you're, you're taken care of. There's beautiful vegetation. There's probably the cows right over there to the side that mm-hmm. you could go milk. Mm-hmm. And the beauty of the mountains and everything right there. It's just the most peaceful, you can make it, the most peaceful, beautiful place in your mind. Here's another one. Wow. I mean, imagine yourself here. Yeah. How fun is that? <laughs> and sometimes you need a little help imagining. So take this and run with it. Can you imagine galaxies and worlds and 
everything. This is what my dad is feeling right now. Oh, yeah. He's actually there feeling this massive expansion. It's absolutely blows my mind and it just brings the vortex of happiness and joy to me. Okay. Look, look at that at water. This. Look how Look clear. at that bridge. Look at the mountain. Can you just taste that water? Yeah. It's so beautiful. Look at this one. You're a part of all that is the, of all in the greatest sense of the word. I mean, this whole universe of creation brought us here to be happy and fulfilled and as beautiful in our soul as anything you can see with your eyes like this picture. But we, when we live outside the vortex, we can't see ourselves as beautiful as that scenery. So beautiful. Here we are. We got to believe everything is working out for us. Everything is working out for us, good or bad. We can change the bad to good by getting back into the vortex. L look at, wait, wait, wait. Do you see that little train up there? Oh, yeah. See, see, yeah. there's a train. It's if moving, you blow it up. It? Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Always moving. There's actually people down on the beach if you blow it up real big. Beautiful clear waters. And then this. Wow. Keep dreaming. Keep dreaming of all your hopes and loves and desires and the law of attraction will just jump right in. And interestingly enough, it's working whether we believe it or not. Yeah. Just like gravity. Yeah. So I don't believe in gravity. <laughs> <laughs> and it still works. I think it's a crazy theory. So when you sit there and go, I don't believe in this law of attraction and I feel terrible and Mary doesn't understand. Well, yes, I do. I understand better we than have you been know. There. Better than you can believe. I know. I know that you feel like you're a victim and you can't get out of it. So just try these little teeny tiny baby steps. How can you not feel happy and looking at that picture? One of the first picture? baby steps is looking at these pictures and monitoring the emotional response in your heart when you look at these things. And see the creation you are. And that's the beginning of being in the vortex you, or getting back into it. Yeah, you get to choose. And look at this. Wouldn't you just love to live here? Creation is as easy as opening your eyes and saying, I want this. It's recognizing the endless existence of everything that is good and wholesome and beautiful and just asking to be a part of it. Yeah, one baby step at a time. Wow, look at this. Can you imagine yourself here? Did you do you see that Olympic sized swimming pool at the top <laughs> of the Swiss Alps? <laughs> look at the beautiful hotels. Did you know that you can go there? All you have to do is dream. How hard is that? The vortex and the power of the world will swirl around you and bring you to that very spot if you let it in right now. The fact, let me say this, the fact that a desire exists within you means that in large part it's already been accomplished and the only thing that is keeping it from coming all the way home to you is that there is this vibrational resistance that is solely based upon your observation that it hasn't come here yet. Yet. Yeah, I, I created that in my mind, but it hasn't come yet. Okay, here's a really good analogy. Let's say you've been diagnosed with cancer, you're living in fear, and understandably you're very frightened and you want to be completely cancer-free. You've already put that out there to the universe. The universe knows about it. Your source is creating this. You want your health back, you want to have energy and be happy, just all those little things. <laughs> well... That's probably not going, it's probably unlikely that it's going to happen today. The momentum is already underway because of the course, you put it out there, okay? You put it out that you want to be healed. But to be healed immediately, that's probably a pivot that's a little too extreme, but it's completely possible to pivot from worrying about your health to feeling appreciation for your current situation and your current life and concentrating on your dreams, you can accomplish that. You can do that within five or 10 minutes. So if you're not married to the outcome happening right this second and, and you're, complete, you're completely desirous to the shift in emotions because you want to feel joy right now and you can accomplish that. And before long, if you do that, you can make this emotional journey. You will have done enough vibrational shifting that perfect health and happiness will flow easily into your existence. That's incredible. That's your power is in convincing you that you are a vibrational, emotional being. Your only power is there, and it is immense. You can only force action so long because force always ends. Your actions don't have much power. Um, the 
but the, the mastery of our thoughts and vibrations are much more powerful. We spend a lot of time concentrating on actions and like, I will take that supplement and I will do it forever and I will do exactly what you tell me. And it changes some things because force works, but it doesn't change very much. Yeah. So you need to care about how you feel in each moment and not so much about the outcome and the end desires. Right now. Yeah. You want your happiness to not be conditional out on outcome. I mean, if you make it conditional on the outcome and the outcome hasn't come yet, yeah. you know, you're just shooting yourself in the foot because you're uneasy. It messes up your vibrational climate, which means it's not going to come even more now. Yeah. So what you're creating consciously, you're retarding its arrival con- unconsciously. And, and because the universe is not static, it's not still. It's dynamic and it's always working out for you in the way you inwardly believe about the now. The now. So, so you know, if you're not if you're not making your vibrational climate conditional on a particular outcome and you're just making it conditional on wanting to feel good now, period all the time, then you've accomplished that emotional shift that we're talking about. And now in the sustaining of that emotional shift, the realization of all your desires must come true. Ah, look at this. We can be free of our problems. We can be free of our depression. It's okay that you have it because help is on the way as soon as you ask. Just allow it to happen. Just allow Allowing doesn't come with strings. No, but, you know, I want this, but I probably can't get it because I don't have a degree, so I can't probably get what I want. But expect it. No buts. Just expect. What does it hurt? What does it hurt to go, oh, I expect to be there next summer? Yes. (laughs) Yeah, if... um if uh, there was a knock at the door and it's a clearing house, whatever that clearing house thing Publishers is. Publisher's clearing Publisher's house. Publisher's clearing house and they have a check for a million dollars. Would you allow them to give it to you? <laughs> yes, you would. Yeah, you probably would. Yeah, just as you expect a paycheck for a good day's work. Yeah. Okay, so just expect this. And here is the most beautiful picture. Make some promises to yourself. Promise yourself to have more fun right now. Promise yourself to take more time for yourself to dream. Isn't that, look at that person standing up there. Begin to see the immensity of your own existence. See the incredible manifestations of your own creative power right now. Yeah. See, see that the, where you are, you have created yourself to be. And if you want to be somewhere else, how you can create something else. You can. I mean, get that good feeling now, and the universe is going to fall in line with your future desires. You won't be blocking it now with negative thoughts of, well, I don't have it now. Yeah. You know, the kind of, well, yeah, I ask for that and, I, and I'm thinking about that and I'm concentrating that and I have it on my wish list and on my wish board, and, but it hasn't come yet. That stops the flow. You bet it that does. stops the vortex. It stops everything. So just baby steps. Look at that picture. How could you be anything but happy? And here, these next four pictures are of where I would like to live. I envision myself there. I pick these out. It's not like that I don't like where I'm living now. It's just that I can't stop myself from creating. So that is one thing I will say to you. If you go before me, I will be saying this at your funeral service. (laughs) She never stopped creating. There I am. I'm in one of those beautiful little places, if not for just a week, maybe my whole life. I don't know. It's just beautiful. Here's another one that just makes me gasp. Oh, so feel and know when you're in the vortex and when, you re- and when you're not that you can just get back there easily right here, right now. And in that vortex is great love hidden only by our not dreaming, seeing it, or asking for it. And wait for this next one. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. We can, you know, we can stand on the mountains in our own mind of imagination. And it's only ourselves and our thoughts that keep us from it. And it is only ourselves and our thoughts that can bring it to us. Only us. We want you to know, we want you to believe that you are afloat in a sea of consciousness of love that transcends all time and existence and that you are from the beginning itself. And you only have to ask to receive. Oh. Look at that. 
Okay. So now how do you feel after looking at all those pictures? How do you feel that is the vortex. It's no more complicated than that. You can bring yourself to it right now. And the whole universe swirls around you and your desires, your creations, your loves and happiness. And yes, this includes your healing, emotional and physical. How could it not? If you're putting out into the universe these incredible emotions and staying there, stay there creating, how... Can you see how just one person staying in the vortex can be as strong as a million that are not? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Do you feel your emotions while you looked at these pictures? That is the vortex. And when you dream, when you can dream, why not be, why would there be any limits to it? So dream away, baby, and rip a hole in the universe. Whatever you can imagine clearly with emotion by creating a perfect vibrational match is yours to be or do or have. Individuals that choose their creations as they choose their focus. Mm -hmm. That's how they choose it. Emotions indicate what you're creating, either consciously or unconsciously. You're creating horribleness or you're creating beautiful beauty. So when you're, you're feeling in fear, when you're feeling out of the vortex, you just have to start dreaming. Just get to dream. You get to dream. There's Noth nothing simpler than that. Yes. Yeah. Can, can somebody stop you from dreaming? Can somebody stop you from imagining? Can somebody stop you from hoping and wishing and believing? No, nobody can. No. Nope. <laughs> no. It doesn't matter. This is how your whole life can be every single second. When, it's, when it, You can change your genes with this. this. This is the true and best healing there is. This is where you can literally change your genetic expression. This is the ultimate in epigenetics. This is where you can actually experience genetic healing. Remember, um, again, listen to podcast 101. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already, because this has been proven that this works. And this is how we can split a hole in the healthcare universe by changing our thoughts now. And I just wanted to tell you, this was brought to you by Switzerland Vacations. They didn't contact me. But no, they're not paying us for an advertisement. No, I, the, this, this is Instagram. And they, I couldn't find their website. I don't, I don't even know if they have one. They have a Facebook and a web, an Instagram. But you have to follow them. I mean, they have 388,000 followers. But still, your little positive energy would help them mm -hmm. out. Just beautiful. And I wanted to give them credit for all those beautiful pictures. Okay, so get ready. We we're we're going to have a little um, exercise here. I guess. This is just going to be so fun. Yeah. Sit this back, is, get this comfortable. This is the baby steps we're talking about. Get comfortable, pull off the side of the road, or just listen, and, and you don't have to watch the video if you don't want to, but this is going to be beautiful. This is Abraham talking through Esther Hicks. This has 2.4 million views, so... Everything is always working out for me. 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 Things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. Things are always working out for me. Everything is working out for me. Things are always working out for me. And since things are always working out for me, and since I know that things are always working out for me, then what other things what I like to define that I would like to be working out for me. Since things are always working out for me, then I want to begin to apply my attention toward the things that I would like to be working out for me. I want to define more clearly what things I want to be working out for me. What things? Not nebulous things, not general things, what specific things would I like to be working out for me? What evidence, what would really, what would really ring my bells? 
what kinds of things would really ring my bells. I would like to have a confidence about me so that when I'm moving through traffic, I feel guided about where to go. I'd like to have good timing. I would like to feel that I'm riding on a cloud or, or a, a magic carpet of momentum. I would like to feel the universal forces working with me. I would like to look into the world and have a sense of who I am. I would like to have a full sense of who I am. I would really like to be so integrated with the fullness of who I am that I'm accepting this world in the fullness of all that it is. So integrated with the fullness of who I am that I'm accepting this world in the fullness of all that it is. All that it is. All that it is. I would like to look into this world and I would like to appreciate the components that have been before that have led to what is right now. I would like to live in a constant state of appreciation. I would like to be an uplifter. I would like anyone who comes into contact with me to benefit as a result of our being together. I would like to not feel bad when that doesn't happen. I would like to be in a place where I'm not at my best, where I'm not even close to my best and not beat up on myself for not being at my best because I know that like the ocean, I have ebb and flow too. I would like to be completely accepting of myself and of everyone else. And I would like to trust in the law of attraction and the information that it gives to me. I would like to be completely accepting of myself and of everyone else. And I would like to trust in the law of attraction and the information that it gives to me. I would like to live in a constant state of appreciation. I'm going to be the being that I am born to be. I'm going to be in this physical body. And I want to be all that I was born to be. I want to have fun. And I want to have clarity. And I want to feel energy. And I want to feel good. And I want to wake up eager for the day. I'm going to be the being that I am born to be. I'm going to be in this physical body. And I want to be all that I was born to be. I want to have fun. And I want to have clarity. And I want to feel energy. And I want to feel good. And I want to wake up eager for the day. I want to sleep good. And I want to eat well. I want others to have that too. I'd like everyone to eat well. I'd like all the little kids to go to bed with a full belly. I'd like them to know how good they are. I'd like that. I'd like children to know their value. I'd like them to know it soon. I'd like them to know it now. I'd like opportunities to help them know it. I'd like to move around with them. I'd like to think about them. I'd like to shine that light on them. I'd like to speculate about that. I'd like to pretend that. I'd like to imagine that. I'd like to soothe myself with that thought. I want people to feel good. I would like people to feel so good that they never feel like taking guns and killing each other. I'd like them to feel that good. I'd like them to feel so good. I'd like people to know the value of who they are. I'd like that. I'd like to be in a place where I can help people know the value of who they are. I'd like that don't want it to come all at once just one at a time I'd like to tune into the frequency of who I am and spread the joy of who I am I'd like to be consistently in my own joy I'd like to be a catalyst to helping more people feel good I'd like to be someone who's such a catalyst to helping people feel good that I don't even notice when they don't I'd like to be so true to my vibrational frequency that anything that I want is flowing into me and anything that I don't want is flowing out of me. Understanding that there will always be contrast on the edge of what I'm living. 
Oh, that's it. I'd like to control my contrast better. I'd like to be better at inviting the contrast. I'd like the contrast to come in the form of a question to which I'm seeking an answer rather than in the form of a problem to which I'm needing a solution. I'd like the problems of the world to be distant enough from me that I'm able to see them in an objective sort of sense. I don't want to be swallowed up in the problems. I want to be on the peripheral of the problems. I want to be out there on the edge of the problems. Close enough that I can help to find the solution, but not so wrapped up in the problem that I'm lost in the problem. I want my cork to be near the surface all the time, if not bobbing on the surface and never deep in the underbelly of the ocean. I want to be up there where it's easy to move, but even when I'm in that state of what could be called depression, I want to know that even then it's okay. Helps on the way. It's okay. Helps on the way. I want to know the source energy is always flowing to me and through me. Always flowing to me and through me. Available at all times. And I want to feel all right about not being in the vibrational vicinity of it. I love knowing that source loves me at all times, even when I'm not in the vibrational vicinity. I like knowing that that gaze is never taken from me. I like knowing that pure positive energy has its gaze upon me at all times. I like knowing that source is keeping source's promise to me. And it is my intention to start right now keeping my promise to myself more of the time. I love knowing that Source loves me at all times, even when I'm not in the vibrational vicinity. I like knowing that that gaze is never taken from me. I like knowing that pure positive energy has its gaze upon me at all times. I like knowing that Source is keeping Source's promise to me. And it is my intention to start right now keeping my promise to myself more of the time. I'm going to have way more fun. I'm going to look for more reasons to feel good. I'm going to take good care of me. I'm going to serve myself first and foremost. I'm going to tend to my vortex and then I'm going to do anything else I have time for. Well, I say I'm going to do that. I'm probably not going to do that. But it's going to be more all right with me when I don't do that. It's going to be all right with me more when I don't do that. I'm not going to set standards for myself that I can't keep, but I'm going to do my best to feel good more of the time. I'm going to have way more fun. I'm going to look for more reasons to feel good. I'm going to take good care of me. I'm going to take good care of me. We have enjoyed this interaction more than words can explain. You are powerful creators, and this has been a powerful group of minds that has come together. We are appreciating your willingness, not just to be in this room, but to be in this life. Not to be in this life, but to be in this world, to be in this universe, to be part of this creative experience of moving forward. It is our desire and it is our knowing that today you've come into closer alignment than you've ever been with who you really are. And we revel in that knowing whether you know it or not. And we anticipate your discovery of the evidence of our knowing in the hours and the days that are before you. There is great love here for you. And as always we remain Let's see, where are we? In the vortex in your grid, in the vortex in your grid, in the vortex in your grid, in the vortex in your grid. In the vortex in your mind, in the vortex in your mind. In the vortex in your actions, in the vortex in your behavior, in the vortex in your inspiration. 
in the vortex in complete and utter appreciation of the life that you breathe into all that is. There is great love here for you. We are complete. kind of an abrupt ending there but that was so beautiful here's esther hicks and she says we teach you to keep saying it the way you want it to be and if you keep saying it the way you want it to be the universe will line up and give you exactly what you've said you've wanted so our inner beings know exactly where you are in terms of physical manifestation ship in relation to everything that you desire. Don't panic about your physical body. It knows what to do. It also knows the path of least resistance to call you there. When you live life, which causes you to request. When you're sick, you want to be well. All these requests by you are already known by your inner being. There's a whole lot of people eating a whole lot of food, trying to compensate for the disconnection between who they are and who they are allowing themselves to be. Eat from the inside out. Listen to the inspiration inside of you. There is nothing, no food, that in and of itself is inappropriate. Because if you're in the vortex, you will be guided to the perfect food through your own good vibrations. Food has a vibration, and you need to meld together your body's desires for the food. Food are vibrational beings. You need to be in alignment with source. That's why we bless our food. It aligns the energy. So, I mean, we can, we can, we think we can only thrive on certain foods, but that's just because we haven't eaten from the inside out as you're talking about. Yeah, we think we have to eat vegetarian or we have to eat just organ meat. Yeah, or we just got to go paleo or we just got to do Atkins. But we can eat most anything that we crave and have it be for our good. If we are in alignment with our source and with our cravings, like like some would be, well, then you could just drink Clorox bleach and it wouldn't hurt you. But what we say <laughs> is if you're in alignment with your source, you wouldn't be stupid enough to drink Clorox bleach. Yeah. So, you know, just try to soothe where you're at. Try to make peace with where you are. Because when you make peace with where you are, you are always turning downstream. Floating down the river of least resistance. I have spent Isn't most of my life fighting paddling. the downhill current, trying to move upstream. <laughs> and, the, and this whole, these last few weeks, these last few days love of going downstream. Yeah, love the truth into being. Come into the vortex. Take a deep breath. Smile. Ask for what you want. Live in appreciation for your week request is on its way. And so to recap, I know this wasn't our usual podcast format, but it's where I've been for the last few weeks. And since I'm the one that gets the podcast ready, (laughs) (laughs) yes, you are, baby. you get what I have studied and loved for the last few weeks. Hopefully it's been healing on the most foundational level. So next podcast, we will get back into the pearls by popular demand. Yes. The pearls and the concepts of foundational forbidden healing of our physical bodies. And boy, do we have some incredible pearls for you. So stay, stay tuned. We'll leave you with um, one last thing for our recap. When you ask, it is given. But at some point, you have to stop asking and start expecting. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think that's so beautiful. So that's the end, but we did a little manifestation ourselves. We, we've been doing this this last week, and this is, this is a little um, text conversation yeah, I this had. just shows you how powerful this is. Well, our job does an even better job of manifesting than we do. Here's the text exchange between me and Marissa, um, incredible employee of ours. We just, I, I said, we've just got an order for Lee Enzymes from Reducio, is that how you say it? Rio Doso. Rio Doso, New Mexico. 
We're going to heal the world, I said. And Marissa said, that's nothing. (laughs) I have a phone consult on Monday with a gentleman from the UK and an order coming through for Asia thyroid from Seoul, Korea. And I have another symptom survey coming through today from Russia. Yeah, so so what about New Mexico? Yeah, really. But look, we're manifesting our long-life energy enzymes to go out to the world. Yes, because they are so... I hesitate to use the word healing, but that's what everybody comes back and says. Just read the reviews at Amazon. Yeah, we've gone through those a lot. Isn't that exciting? Mm -hmm. We're manifesting this all over the world so we can go very foundational and start ripping that hole in the healthcare universe. Don't forget to go to ForbiddenDoctor.com, take our free survey, even if you're not from Russia. Go take it. Yes. And don't forget, we are coming. We are doing our webinars as fast and furious as we can, and they are coming soon. And thank you again for listening to this very long forbidden information. If you like what we're doing, you can help us. Leave us feedback at the bottom and um, join us for our next podcast for another in-depth discussion of forbidden knowledge. And remember, you can always call, text, or email us with questions because we can today spin in the the vortex and start a health revolution with this dent and go on to rip a hole in the healthcare. Mary, universe. this is the most incredible podcast you have ever put together. But we do have to read this unvortex like disclaimer. <laughs> well, this, I'm not going to get out of the vortex, so you read it. Okay. The statements made in this webinar about specific products have not been evaluated by the United States Food and Drug Administration and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. All information provided or any information contained on or in any product label or packaging or this webinar or podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for advice from your physician or other health care provider. Thank you again for listening to this Forbidden yeah, Information. we'll see you soon. Join us for our next podcast. See you later. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to the Forbidden Doctor podcast. If you are curious about long life energy enzymes or ageless thyroid, you can purchase them without a membership from our website at ForbiddenDoctor.com or get our enzyme formula from Amazon.com by searching the full term long life energy enzymes. Don't forget to take our obligation free symptom survey to get a free personalized supplement protocol recommended for you by Dr. Jack, Mary, or one of our qualified nutritionists. Take the survey, Get a call from our nutritionist to create a protocol and a patient login. Then use that login to see your own personal protocol along with any favorites you've saved from our symptom library. Remember, our website and our clinic are here for you always.